Hi. Today we've got a new soldering station to take a look at. This one is the Weimon T31. And this is a 120 watt JBC style soldering station. And it's available in various configurations. The one that I've got here is the version with all three types of standard JBC hand pieces. So the T245, T210 and T115. This video is sponsored by PCBWay and later on in the video we're going to be using some PCBs that we've had made here for testing this soldering station. And if you want to get your own PCBs manufactured here you can click on PCB Instant Quote, upload your Gerber files and select the various options and you can choose from the very low cost prototype PCBs to production level advanced PCBs. And I want to highlight just a couple of new features on the PCBWay website. The first one is multicolor UV printing. So instead of your standard silk screen, you can actually have a color picture uh, printed onto the PCB, which can make some really interesting designs or for a much more usable silk screen on the PCB. And the other option that I wanted to highlight here, which people often miss, is if you click on the more section just here, you can actually select from a whole bunch of additional options for your PCBs. And recently they've added black FR4 material to their capabilities. So instead of that yellowy colour that you get on most PCBs, you can actually have it made from a black FR4 material. So if any of those options interest you, don't forget to visit PCBWay.com. This soldering station was sent to me by the China Phone Fix store, and here we are on their AliExpress page. And the T31 is available in a few different configurations. So you can get it in a 110 volt version or a 220 volt version, depending on where you are in the world. And then you can get it with various handpiece and cartridge configurations. So for example here, you can get it in single handpiece configurations with three cartridges each. Or you can get it in the version that I've been sent here with the three different handpieces and nine cartridges in total. The unit is fairly compact. It's in this cube sort of configuration with a slightly sloping front for all of the stuff that's on the top. If we look at the measurements... It's about 120 millimetres in each direction. And one thing you'll notice is it does feel a little bit heavy, so I think we've got a proper transformer in here. But overall, it's got that same kind of feel as some of the lower-end soldering stations that you can buy from China. In terms of the user interface, we've got this colour TFT on the front here with 128 by 160 pixel resolution. We've got three control buttons to go through the menu and to control the system. We've got some brass wool with an anti-splash silicone pad over the top here and some sponge for cleaning the tip. And then at the top here we've got the cradle for the handpiece and two areas of storage for holding cartridges and this is to help you remove the cartridge while it's still hot from the handpiece. There's not really much else to speak of on the design. If we just take a look at the back, we've got the power switch, IAC connector and the fuse. We've got the connector off to one of the three hand pieces. We've got a USB port for firmware updates and we've got a four millimeter banana jack for connecting to your ESD mat or the plug. And then just on the bottom here, I think you can just about see the transformer through these vents just here. And then we've got the label. Interestingly, there's no mention of the power rating or the current consumption on the label, which is normally what you'd have on the rating plate. Uh, so the only specification point for the 120 watts is from the website itself. Here's the three hand pieces. I don't think there's too much to say about these. It's pretty much the same as every other clone of these JBC hand pieces. What we have got is some flexible cable that does feel like it's the heat resistant type. We've got really nice flexible strain relief here. And then this is the main part of the handle with a highly polished uh, collar just here, which is the part that sits into the cradle and tells the station that you've actually placed the hand piece in the cradle so it can go into sleep. We'll just see how a cartridge fits in here. So you just push it in until it bottoms out and that has gripped it really quite tightly. So that feels pretty much the same as a genuine JBC. Now this is the largest of the hand pieces, uh, but I would say this is the most versatile and the one that will suit most people. We've got the largest selection of cartridges available for this particular hand piece direct from JBC. And they do go down to very small geometries I'm not really seeing a reason why you'd want to go for the T210 over the T245 unless you just physically want a slightly smaller handpiece because this one has pretty much the same geometry tips available as this one but we've also got larger ones that you can't get for that one. The T115 is tiny and this one is ideal if you only ever do 
SMD work all the time. But do be careful when you're putting in these little cartridges because the geometry is so small, they're often really, really sharp and you can easily stab yourself. Uh, but the little cartridge goes in the end here and you end up with a very small, lightweight solution uh, which is you know, really quite comfortable to hold if you only do very small rework. Now if you want to replace the brass wool either with a new one or with some inox wool or something like that from JBC you do have to remove this silicone section here to gain access but a word of caution there is a hole uh, either side here and also you can see the flat flex which presumably goes to the screen PCB through here. So if you are putting fluid in the sponge pad to dampen it, be careful because water can actually trickle down here and start filling up the soldering station over time. Okay, right, we've got a couple of flat flexes in here stopping us removing the cover properly. Let me just remove those. So perhaps some similarities here between this and the GVM station. I think it's the same transformer. Certainly the dimensions look very similar, so 65 by 55 millimeters it's got the same color secondary winding so I doubt this is going to be rated for the 120 watts that it says on the website and in the user manual we've got the thinner blue secondary winding same as before and I think these are the right way around this time uh, but the blue goes straight into a bridge rectifier to some electrolytic capacitors and then into a linear regulator there doesn't appear to be any DC to DC converters on here so all linear regulation onto the front panel and then the thicker brown secondary windings for the heater go through the MagSense current sense IC. This allows us to measure AC current. And then we've got two MOSFETs back to back here to allow us to switch AC. So they're switching at the zero crossing point. So we just switch in and out full cycles of AC to change the power into the cartridge. Then also we've got a little instrumentation amplifier here for the thermocouple measurement so that we get an analog output to the microcontroller and this is the connection off to the front panel so we're going to have things like the USB connection, the thermocouple output, the control for the two MOSFETs, the current sense and also this is the connector that goes off to the cradle to detect when the handpiece is in the cradle or when you're removing a tip. So this is very similar to the GVM just a little bit simpler, uh, slightly lower cost arrangement and then we've also got this little PCB at the back here which has the connections for the USB connector, the thermocouple and then the three wires here which are for the heater on the hand pieces. Then we've got the IEC connector and because the power switch is all built in we've just got two AC connections coming out of it that go straight to the transformer and then we've got an earth connection which is connected through these crimped lug lugs onto the transformer and also onto the 4mm banana jack. So everything all looks quite good actually there from a mains safety perspective. Here's the top cover and we've got just two wires off to the cradle and the tip change area. Now interestingly the black wire is loose here. I hope that screw hasn't bottomed out. Let's try it out. No, it just didn't get tightened up all the way for some reason. Uh, and then we've got the control PCB, so there's really not much on here. We've got a beeper, we've got one of these Gehi um, STM32 type processors here. And all that's doing is driving the LCD on the front and the three buttons and interfacing with the various um, control on the main PCB. Right, let's have a look at the user interface. So we'll power it up and we get a splash screen. And then we've got the main screen. It's very simple user interface here. So we can press up and down to adjust the set point temperature in five degree steps. It's fixed at five degree steps on this system. It's picked up. We've got the T245 handpiece connected. We're in sleep mode because the handpiece is in the cradle. We've got a counter for just how long the system's been turned on. And then we've got the microcontroller temperature here, 29 degrees C, so that it can calibrate properly for the thermocouple. To go into the menu, you hold down the middle button here. Now desk just when you press the OK button it saves the settings and then takes you back to the home screen. We've got sleep. Now unfortunately, very similar to the GVM, this only has a sleep mode and it can't go into kind of a setback temperature. So when you put the handpiece in the cradle, it will just turn off the heater entirely. But you can set a delay should you want to. So you can go to sleep mode and you can turn on the delay if you don't want uh, it to start cooling down immediately. And you can set a time here. So something like 30 seconds might be quite reasonable to have in there. Then we've got the beep. 
so there is a little beeper in there. Every time you press a button, we'll turn that off for now. We've got language, so you can pick from either English or Chinese. And then we've got the calibration, so you can set the offset. Uh, so it shows you what the thermocouple is reading now, what the target is, and then you can adjust the offset here. So we can go and adjust it as we need to. And we'll do a calibration uh, in a moment anyway. Then we've got the unit, so we can do uh, C or F. And we can set an upper limit on the temperature. So we'll just change that to 400. And then the factory defaults. And then finally, just information about the system. So the Wemon T31 serial number and the version number 24.V01. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So we'll press OK to save those settings. And then we'll have a look at the calibration. So we're currently set to 350 degrees C. Let's see what the power consumption is when we remove it from the cradle. This should be the maximum that the system can provide. 62 watts or so. So yeah, very similar to the GVM. Unfortunately, not, not living up to the claims of 120 watts. But let's see what the calibration is like. About 10 degrees off. So let's go into the menu. And yeah, approximately 350 there. So the calibration works. You will have to adjust the calibration per cartridge. We've got the little 115 handpiece connected now and you can see it's detected that at the bottom. Let's take it out of the cradle and see the power consumption. Ah, so 40 watts into the little cartridge. I think that's pushing it quite hard actually. I think the genuine JBC only does about 20 watts at the most. Let's see what the calibration's like here. And it's off by about 25 degrees C. So you can see you would need to calibrate the system every time you change the cartridge. Right, so here's the little T115 handpiece. I think this is a bit of an unfair challenge, but we've got the high thermal capacity PCB. Four layers here with thermal vias. Let's see if we can melt any solder here. I won't expect much from this. Even with that 40 watt rating, this is quite a difficult test. But it's trying to put 40 watts into there. Okay, so we've got the supply tip here with the T245. Possibly the genuine JBC might perform a little bit better here. The genuine JBC cartridge, that is. But we're putting about 40 or 50 watts into the PCB at this point. Let's put some more solder in. And yeah, not too bad. Not quite as good as some of the other JBC clones that are rated higher power. But it is able to dump a reasonable amount of power there, as you can see, into these high thermal demand pads. And just for comparison's sake, here's what the Metcal is like on one of these pads. Sorry, the power meter isn't hooked up, but you can see how much more power we're able to deliver with one of these Metcal systems. It just dumps heat into these pads without any trouble whatsoever.
So that's the Wemon T31, very similar in performance, I think, to the GVM H3. It's definitely underpowered compared to the Ikes and Stations and the JBC, but I think because this seems to share the same transformer and everything, we're getting the same performance as the GVM H3. Now, it does drive the T115 handpiece quite hard, which means that you can use it for some low thermal demand through hole soldering, even though it's mainly designed for SMD work. The only thing I noticed there, not a criticism of the station, but of the handpiece itself, uh, this metal collar does seem to get quite hot. So if your fingers happen to slide down whilst you're soldering, which is quite possible, there's not a lot to grip on here, then um, this collar does start to burn your fingers after a very short period of time. So something to watch out for there. But other than that, I think the system seems to be fairly well made. Certainly seems to be electrically safe as well, which is often a concern for the Chinese equipment. So if you're some, after something in this kind of compact form factor and don't need the extra power of the Ixon or Genuine JVC, then this might be the option for you. So I'll put a link to this item in the description down below if you're interested in taking a look. Also, I'll put a link to our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. And if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, if there are any stations that you want me to review, uh, then do comment those in the comment section as well, and I'll see if I can get hold of those. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.